Huh? I'm not a bum. I'm a poker player. I once had wealth, power, and the love of a beautiful woman. Now only have two things. My friends and uh, my thermos. Huh? My story? Okay. It was never easy for me. I was born a poor black child. I remember the days back in Las Vegas. I would drive down to the Bellagio to play some poker. I was going to do the vlog opening on the roof, but it was way too windy. Plus, what do I have to say? I'm at the Bellagio. You know where I'm at. You know why I'm here. So, that's the opening, I guess. Let's just get to it. So, here I am again at the Bellagio and feeling good. Fresh off a stellar 510 session at the Encore that ended earlier this morning, where I essentially sun ran for three or four hours. Hit every draw, faded every suck out, and even won two bomb pots. That feeling of invincibility carried over into this session. I mean, last night everything just worked. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. A few hands of nothing have passed before we get to this one. The Under the Gun 1 player opens to $30, the cutoff calls, and I find a hand that I probably should just fold on the button. 7-6 offsuit. But I'm invincible, remember? I hit everything, remember? I'll make it work, so I call the $30. The big blind comes along. 4-5 jack. Y'all see where this is going, don't you? The big blind checks and the Under the Gun 1 player continues for $80. The cutoff has seen enough and folds and action is back on me. Open-ended straight draw? Say less. I call and the big blind's hand follows the cutoff into the muck. Surprisingly, the turn isn't a three or an eight. It's another jack. What in the world is this? I missed a draw on the turn? However, before I can finish my inner rant about how unfair life is, the Under the Gun 1 player bombs $220 into my face. I don't know what's going on here, but I don't want to play anymore. Fold. Okay, so we got that first little hiccup out of our system. Now it's time to get to business. A few hands later, I open from the Under the Gun 2 spot with everyone's favorite unpaired piece of shit. Ace-King offsuit. Both blinds call my $30 open. The flop of queen 8 6 rainbow gets quickly checked by those same blinds, and I have no reason to really bet into two people with this hand, so it's checked through. The turn jack of clubs puts two clubs on board and also gives me additional outs to the nuts. The small blind leads for $40, the big blind calls, and why not? I come along as well. I'm pretty sure a 10 will come on the river, and I can get this run good started. The river is not a 10, but it's close. It's the nine of spades. Both blinds check again, and with a one liner to a straight on board versus two villains, I choose not to turn this hand into a bluff. The small blind leading the turn into two people should be relatively strong, and I don't often count on unknowns to find folds when even recreational players know at this point that these type of boards are often bluffed. So what happened, you wonder? Oh. I lose to the small blinds bottom pair. Come on now. Okay, I'm looking to turn everything around in this next hand. The hijack limps and I raise to $40 in the cutoff with king jack offsuit. Action folds back around to the hijack and he calls. I don't know much by this action, but I do know that he doesn't have a premium hand. 
So most likely I'm dealing with a small or middling pocket pair. Queen eight seven with two spades. The hijack checks and admittedly, I missed a c-bet here. I could garner a lot of folds from ace highs and those previously mentioned pairs by just tossing in some chips. But I don't. I check. The turn pairs the eight and the hijack checks again and now, although I don't think it would get much credit, a delayed c-bet could work especially if followed up by another on the river. However, I check again. Am I just trying to lose this hand? The river pairs the queen and the hijack checks for a third time. Okay, he officially has nothing. He has either ace high, which probably shouldn't fold to a bet, or a small pocket pair that I'm already beating, or maybe, unlikely, but maybe he has a similar hand as mine. I toss out $40 in the off chance he folds ace high or a chop, and he snap calls with king high for a chop. Ugh. This one was 100% my fault. I could have easily won this hand. Easily. In this next hand, I opened a $30 again from the cutoff with pocket queens. Totally reasonable. The button, whom I've had yet to see even enter a pot, now three bets me to $90 and action folds back around to me. Having not entered a pot or not, this is pretty much a slam dunk four bet let's battle type hand. So what do I do? I call. What? Why? Heads up, we see ace, 10, four with two spades, and I'm out of position to the three better. I check. He bets $70, and after a bit of deliberation and knowledge that the field likes to throw out random C bets without following through on future streets, I decide to call. Let's see one more card. The turn 10 of hearts isn't a bad card for me to see at all. I check again, and now the button follows up with a $250 bet. Okay. I'm done. Chalk another one up to playing like garbage. Curious, I questioned him about his hand by asking him if he had kings. I know he didn't have kings. No one would play kings that way. I really wanted to get a baseline on his voice, his demeanor, if he was talkative or not, any information about his personality, etc. Do you have kings? What? Do you have kings that hand? That hand? Yeah. No. I have ace. You, you have nothing. I have queens. You have queens? Yeah. You didn't fold that? Uh, I have an ace and ten. Did you? <laughs> I revealed to him what I had, and he was surprised that I didn't four bet, which really tells me that he has more positional knowledge than most. He says that he had ace ten, and I don't know, I believe him, which also means that my four bet most likely would have ended this hand. God. After that hand, he actually spoke a lot and gave the table a ton of information on what it's like playing poker in China. So much fun to play in, in the Beatles. Because in China, it's illegal. Is it really? Yeah. Even home game. Wow. Like coming. <laughs> wow. It's too noisy because China, oh, apartment, right? It's yeah. Too noisy. Okay. Someone, <laughs> please, they come in. You go to jail for a couple months. Wow. wow. Like I said earlier, I was just off this session, although in this next hand, I was dead right and dead wrong at the same time. And that's, that's pretty hard to do. Here, the under the gun two player opens the $30 and I make a questionable call, and by questionable, I mean bad, 
with Ace-5 offsuit. Suits matter, and although Ace-5 suited is a mandatory call and sometimes a shove his open back down his throat type hand, Ace-5 offsuit versus an early position open should probably just find the muck most of the time. But I soldier on. The flop of Deuce-5-3 rainbow is incredibly better for me than an early position opener. I have all the sets. I have all the two pair and way more straights. I mean, he shouldn't be opening with deuces or varieties of 6-4. In other words, I have an extreme advantage here. We elect to check rather than donk and he continues small on this board. My board. We check raise to $80 and he tanks for a while, then calls. The turn 10 of clubs does nothing for me at all. I follow my check raise with a check and now the villain goes into the tank for literally 41 seconds. He tanked so long that I wondered if he knew the action was on him. After his long pause, he now bets $130. Something's off. I don't know if it was my spidey sense or subconsciously I picked up on some behavior, but I had very little doubt that I was still ahead. I quickly call his $130 bet. The River Queen of Spades, much like the Ten of Clubs before it, does nothing for me. And once again, I check. And again, he goes into the tank. Only 25 seconds this time, which, let's be real, is an eternity. Now he bets $250. His line really doesn't make a lot of sense unless he has a set of tens. But a big part of me thinks he's still completely full of it. I don't take too long in calling this bet and... You can imagine my joy when I discovered I was right about the turn. As the dealer is shipping him and his ace-queen offsuit the pot. This session is slightly frustrating. Although I know, even in real time, that I'm not playing the best. But all you can ever do is put those hands behind you and move on. So that's what I do. The godlike run good is definitely eluding me this session. Although I'm picking up some small pots pre-flop or with c-bets... All the pots of any merit aren't going my way. You don't have to worry. Not a day. Here the cutoff limps and the button does as well. I peek down at Ace Jack offsuit in the small blind and race to $60 and get snap called by the big blind. This I noticed. There was no thought of three betting me. He was just going to call whatever I raised. Interesting. The cutoff also calls, but the button folds even with the great pot odds and position. What can I say? We're three ways to this flop. Five, jack, ten with two spades. Great flop, and absolutely no reason to slow play this. We lead for $80 into this pot and get called by both of them. The turn six of spades brings in the front door flush draw, but I continue. $130 this time. This bet sees the big blind fold, and the cutoff goes deep into thought, and after an extended pause, he chooses to raise. He makes it $400 to go. He's screaming strength. He limp calls pre, calls my bet into two people on the flop, and then raises the turn when the flush comes in? Holding no spade in my hand, I don't even have emergency escape hatch outs if another spade hits the river. I could potentially be stone cold dead. I make the slow fold, and the cutoff shows pocket jacks. Yeah, I was stone dead. Running good, playing badly, or playing good and running badly, it doesn't matter. The one thing I won't do is abandon my strategy over the results of one session. That being said, the blinds really aren't fighting back much. Actually, almost never. Looking down at 10-5 of spades from the button, which is typically a borderline opening hand, now slides smoothly into the mostly opening bucket. We make it $30 to go, and in this instance, the big blind defends. Fair enough. We catch a decent flop in queen-jack-7 with two spades, and when the big blind checks, I see bet a bit larger. $40. He tanks, but he finds the call. 
The six of spades turn doesn't suck. Wow, I finally made a hand. He checks again, and I continue for $150, only to be disappointed by his snap fold. Okay, okay, let's keep moving in this direction. Not a day. She's that kind of woman, yes she is, she's gonna give it away. She's gonna give it away. You don't have to worry, baby. She's gonna give it away. It just ain't no use in worry now. In this next hand, the under the gun player is open to $30, and here I am again, this time in the small blind, with this ridiculous excuse for a strong hand. We three bet to $130, and he calls. King three, four with two spades. Good start. Good start. We continue for $70, expecting to have far the best of it most of the time, and he calls again. Turn three of hearts, pairing the three shouldn't change anything, as the under-the-gun player should have zero threes in a hand that he opened and then called a three bet from the small blind with. Safe card. I continue for $200, and he calls again. I am now praying that he has a hand like king-queen. Well, that is until the queen of clubs hits the river. Ugh. I'm betting the river, but no need to go big. If he has the same hand as I do, that river will paralyze him just as it's paralyzing me. If I bet and he raises, I might be in trouble. I slide $220 in the middle and he pretty quickly folds. I can live with that outcome. I was a preflop demon this session. I won a ton of pots preflop by opening or three betting and everyone just folding. I can live with that too. In one of my last hands, the cutoff opens to $30. And all I really know about the cutoff at this point is that he likes to bet and he bets often and he has had various bluffs picked off. So I defend with the queen six of spades. Honestly, I was going to defend with the queen six of spades anyway. The six of clubs, five of clubs, five of spades flop is generally good for us. I mean, it's nice that I have a pair, but the flop is just good overall for my range. It's not bad. Check. He continues for $20 and I make an easy call. The turn to four of hearts is even better for me but I still have to be wary of his overpairs. I can't just go crazy. Check. His aggression continues for $80 this time. I still have top pair, and like I said, the guy likes to bet. Call. The river jack of clubs is not so good for me. Not only is it an overcard to my six, but it also brings in the front door flush. Theoretically, I have more flushes than he does. But do I want to lead out or check raise this card hoping that he folds pocket queens or something? Probably not. I still have a pair and my take on him that he just likes to fire bets. So I'll just let him fire bets. But it doesn't feel good. Check. I guess he had had enough. He gives up. And I win this one. With my six. Just a six. Near your yellows. Yes, sir. I'm out, dealer. Yes. Done playing with these losers. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, we're home. We're going to wrap up today's session by saying poker is interesting. Last two days, running over tables, running good, everything working as it should. And today, smashed, annihilated. Questioning if I know how to beat this game. Down $55. $55. Down. About four hours. Couldn't get anything going. And now, I don't know. We have to regroup. We have to question our life choices. I guess there's always the next session. So, so if you like this vlog, don't. Don't like this one because I lost. And don't subscribe either, because I lost. Subscribe to winners, not this. $55. I'll catch you next time. Hey, any of you bombs ever heard of Jamin Burton? I've heard of him. Born in Cincinnati? Uh-huh. Ran good for one session and then thought he was a poker god? I was just telling these guys. Dad. Mom. Lily. I was so glad to be going home. I remember those days when I sang and danced with my family on the porch of the old house. But things change. And with all the additions to the family, we had to tear down that old house. Even though we loved it but we built us a bigger one. Come in, we're ready for you. We've been waiting. <laughs> they are planning on asking me random questions for their Ace Holes podcast. We were so confident that this man could draw. <laughs> Four twenty. You know I walk the And then some wild man came to the table. Talkative, that's good. Might have been action, maybe. I don't know, because he was super slow, so I changed tables. I shot it twice. I don't give a gift the tail. They call me Big Bad John. They call me Big Bad John. It's such an update. It's like riding a bike. Lily, Jamie Kerstetter. I'd love to talk to you more, but I gotta watch. I gotta watch. I gotta see who wins this. 100K guarantee. Sorry to disappoint you, but I didn't mess up that many times this time. <laughs> Not that many. Near perfect. And today, smashed. And, and. I was going to do the vlog opening on the roof. I am not a bum. I'm a jerk. I once had wealth, power. I was born a poor black child. I've heard of him. Born in Mississippi. Uh-huh. We had to tear down the old house, even though we loved it. But we built us a bigger one. Just to take me a walk in the